Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Brian Lutchmeyer, an EDP chair. Um, just wanted to record a, a short message to all of the membership. Um, so forgive me for perhaps the next few minutes, but do bear with me because I want to be serious. Uh, I want to be... <laughs> Thoughtful, reflective, and right now, self-aware. Um, you may have already noticed we've been six weeks in lockdown. I have attempted to grow my hair and I uh, think I'm doing pretty, pretty good. So feel free, feel free and beg to differ. But uh, quite happy with this haircut at the minute. Uh, what I will say is for the forthcoming uh, bits, uh, forgive any continuity errors. So I'm going to start with, it's a tough time for all, and notwithstanding personal circumstances, our professional working practices, and thinking about how we marry all of those things together, and some of the pressures with life at home, and trust me, there are, <sighs> right, you lot, pack it in. And so to the sector. As universities and HEIs and FE colleges and secondary schools are all going through the same process, thinking about what is going to happen for the next academic year, some of the answers that will, I'm sure, gain ground and clarity as we head towards September and give institutions time to prepare and anticipate what the needs might be, whether that's through remote delivery as it is now or moving into a transitional phase as restrictions may ease. It is also presupposition at this point and uh, I'm conscious particularly of our work with disabled students. So the work that we do is so varied. It really is so varied when I think about the start of the student journey, um, whether that's from assessment, applying for DSA through to implementation delivery of, of specialist support within educational settings, whether that's in FE or HE, um, graduation or completion of qualifications and then moving forward. And the ethos around social model of disability has to be core in all of our thinking, particularly at this time. When I sat down and really thought about what the impact is for students, existing students, but also students coming in to further or higher education in this instance, um, there's a lot of transition to make. There's a lot of challenges for individuals, disability withstanding or not, um, in making that step forward into college or university life. Now for disabled students and uh, students, for example, who have, may have a mental health condition or have a, uh, a complex need um, through multiple disabilities, uh, long-term health conditions, um, mental health uh, support needs, etc. This is key and core and I'm pretty sure that in terms of the work that you might be doing and some of the contact you've had with um, the students that you're engaged with um, these are anxieties that you may have come across may come across um, or actually may not actually come to you uh, in your capacity in my role as chair I am obviously um, involved deeply with the disabled student stakeholder group meetings um, and uh, the current situation that's resulting um, from the coronavirus pandemic is particularly around SPLD uh, remote assessments. Now at the time of, of recording this that's still 
needing to be fully clarified in terms of the positioning from SLC. But we also know that there is a strong voice from the sector, including ours and other partner stakeholder organisations, to ensure that the outcomes for practitioners and most importantly students are there in our thinking. With the concerns thinking ahead, we will work through that together. And you have my word and the word of the board and the NADP office uh, in terms of what we will continue to do, what we will continue, continue to offer. And with the um, changes to our upcoming conference, obviously, because we can't be face to face. And in my, on behalf of myself and the board, we, you know, we are. Um, Disappointed that that is the case. However, reality is that we need to keep safe and we need to keep ourselves and each other safe. So in preparation for that, myself, the board and in particular the office are working very hard to provide something that is accessible, enjoyable, still has the element of fun and of um, freedom to network and to share practice. Um, in an online and virtual setting that you as members can dip in and out of, watch at your leisure, be directly engaged or indirectly engaged, watch at a later time um, or watch live. Yeah, you never know really what might happen there. And at the point of this recording, you may have noticed it's not my forte, um, but talking to myself clearly is. And hopefully at this point that you're listening, I'm not actually talking to myself. Of course. I might be. Mm. And so I uh, finally have my hair cut. Um, and I've noticed there's lots of ums. But one of the things I want you to be aware of um, in terms of members is what you're getting here is the real me. Uh, I deeply care about the work that, that we do and the voice that we have. I deeply care about how we use that voice and how we represent that voice, particularly by myself and the board and the office, so that your voice is heard. That is crucial for anything happening in the sector that affects disabled students as we move forward and will ensure that the end outcome is the one we all need to work toward. So I'm gonna sign off now. Um, I will be in touch. You will see me during the conference say in some way, shape or form. Do engage with it. Think about the CPD opportunities that we have been offering in the past year and will continue to offer in the forthcoming year. Again, we will adapt and adjust to meet the needs of you as a membership and offer new elements and have creative new ways of thinking and particularly around the different ways in which we are working currently. How can we apply those moving forward on a longer term basis that adds value to the support that we offer, the engagement that we provide and, you know, most importantly, enriching the student experience for disabled students nationally. So the last thing I would say is stay safe, look after yourselves, your family, your colleagues, um, look after your health and well-being, you know. Go outside, enjoy some of the sunshine and the rain, but, you know, mostly the sunshine uh, as and when you can. Um, make sure that you are able to remain in contact and reduce isolation, whilst also thinking about the anxieties and the stresses and the isolation factors associated with students that we may already be currently engaged with or for those that are preparing to start study um, in September um and forward from there um i'm gonna keep rambling so rather than that forgive me um i will see you all soon take very very good care of yourselves and bye